All right, let's bring in Nigel Farage, the former leader of the UK Independence Party, a Fox News contributor. Uh, Nigel, we always love having you on. We thought we'd be talking a lot more politics, but again, we're talking terror. When you heard Theresa May say, a British born citizen who uh, has been investigated for his ties to Islamic terrorism, uh, we had a guest on earlier that says that British born was a shot at Trump. Do you look at it that way? Uh, well, I mean, they always try and emphasize that uh, because they're so embarrassed about their immigration policies. Look, the point is uh, that we do have radicalization going on inside our country. Some of it is going on in state-run schools and state-run prisons, and that is something I think we really could deal with. What is the atmosphere like in London today? I mean, you know, you had a number of years where nothing happened, uh, mm. and then suddenly this thing which is so hard to protect yourself from. The guy takes a rental car, jumps a curb, kills people on a bridge, and then goes in and stabs somebody with a knife. What are people saying in London? Uh, I mean, of course, people are remarkably calm, given what happened, um, and that, of course, is a good thing. But uh, I really believe that some very searching questions are now being asked. I think the population of this country and indeed most of the other European states. You know, we're now saying to our governments, look, frankly, you have brought this upon us through immigration policies and through not cracking down on extremism that has grown in communities. What are you going to do for us? So, so we're calm, uh, but I do, I do think we demand answers. How many people think like you? Well, you know, there was a, um, a survey the other day uh, done by an institute called Chatham House, very neutral. And they showed seven out of ten European countries where the population, by majority, wanted a total end to all Muslim immigration. Now, wow. I've never advocated that. All I advocate is that we have a proper vetting yeah. process. But it shows you uh, that actually the public right across Europe are beginning to lose patience with this. Right. Oh, proper vetting? There's going to be protest outside the office as soon as your interview is done. Uh, well, they will keep... uh, yeah. go ahead. I, I, yeah, I know. I mean, you know, and, and just look at what Trump tried to do. All he was trying to do with that temporary travel ban was to make America a little bit safer. And as you say, they're protesting on Fifth Avenue. So the early reports say they believe that this, that this terrorist acted alone which is insane because they've already made seven arrests of links to him. Dan Bongino, yeah. former Secret Service and police officer, said this this morning. You know, we have an assimilation problem right now. It's pretty clear that this worldwide PC effort for multiculturalism has failed. What we've done is we've created these cultural silos in individual communities which have made it easier for people to be radicalized. They feel isolated from other communities within the larger community. You know, they're not lone wolves. This is the strategy for ISIS, to go and target people through Internet propaganda, radicalize them, and, and set them loose for these little soft target terror attacks that don't leave a lot of investment. Investigative footprints. The lone wolf term is gone. You're, you're, I'm glad you brought that up. So, how do you vet these individuals and how do you force people to assimilate? Nigel? Well, uh, forcing people to assimilate is not an easy thing to do. But, uh, you know, I very recently I went to a suburb uh, just outside Manchester where there was a whole community where in many cases they've been in Britain for years and no one spoke English. So, you know, a good start is to make sure that everyone speaks the same language. And secondly, what needs to happen is the police and the authorities need to stop turning a blind eye. You know, there's a little town called Rotherham in the north of England where we saw the mass sexual exploitation of underage girls and nothing was done about it because the police and others feared they might be thought racist if they did something about it. Sure. So we've got to be a lot more robust, uh, a lot less fearful of being criticized. We've got to root out the problems that exist already within our country and be incredibly strict about who newcomers are. All right. Uh, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about what Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intel Committee, yeah. revealed yesterday. And that was during the Trump transition, uh, apparently in December and January, the um, upper, the uh, Intel apparatus in the United States of America uh, picked up members of his transition team talking to various people not related to the uh, Russian investigation and apparently then 
a number of these documents have been distributed throughout the intel community, perhaps with the intent of damaging Trump and associates. But what's really disturbing, Nigel, is the fact that under our FISA rules, the names of American citizens are supposed to be masked. But in this case, they were unmasked for all to see. What do you think is going on here? I find it amazing that when Trump said he was very upset about being monitored, he was basically called a liar. He was called delusional by everybody. And when the evidence comes out that proves that, yet again, when Trump makes a statement, his direction of travel is nearly always, always right, um, and, and what we now see um, is the media coverage of that fact. Right infinitely small, infinitely smaller oh, yeah. than the accusations that were being made this time last week. And I do honestly think, you know, you've had an election, you've got a winner. It would be nice, wouldn't it, if people could actually give this 45th president of the USA an even break. Here is Devin Nunes yesterday, uh, who went to the White House after going to the CIA and NSA with his information. Listen. What I've read uh, seems to me to be some level of surveillance activity, perhaps legal, uh, but I don't know that it's right and I don't know that the American people would be comfortable uh, with, with what I've read, but let's, let us get all the reports. Chairman, and, Chairman, and Chairman, 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 the President was involved. correct in what he tweeted? It is, it is possible. And Donald Trump said yesterday he feels somewhat vindicated, Nigel. Because he had said that mm. he felt the wiretapping was happening. Yeah, I mean, for Donald Trump to use a term like somewhat vindicated uh, is mastery of understatement, isn't it? I should think he's, I should think he's pleased uh, that he's been proved to be right. right. Uh, but I think he's owed, but I do think he's owed an apology by large sections of the media who, as I say, right. effectively were calling him a liar. And as soon as that yeah, came well, out, I know. Uh, CNN started running with a story that they have an FBI source that says that there is collusion between the Russians and uh, the Trump administration. So as soon as something yeah. happens, there's a counter because there's people leaking inside our intelligence community and it's flat out embarrassing. Yeah, no, it is. And uh, it's it's I must say uh, that probably the biggest, most difficult job that Donald Trump has got is that the whole apparatus of Washington uh, was set up. Everyone's earning their salaries. Everyone's comfortable. They don't want a radical new president to change things in the USA, but I believe, uh, knowing him a bit, uh, that he's a strong man and he'll win through. Somewhat vindicated. All right. Nigel, thank you very much for joining us today from London.